Hey guys, it's Alex here, and today I've got another tutorial for you, and it will be an After Effects tutorial, and I'm going to be showing you a few different techniques that I've used when I actually used the plugin called Trapcode Shine. Now, if you don't know what this plugin is called, it uh, what it actually does, but you can create really nice effects, such as this little sort of flash here, where it, it makes it look like it's really coming, like the light, there's a light coming out of this logo here, for example, and also I've got other examples where in my info promo I've used it if you, if you see where a thumbnail there you can see where there was a flash I just turn this down a bit but you see you see here out here it makes it really stand out it looks like light is coming from it and I've used it in a few different ways and also near the end I've also done a sort of so you see that there where it wiped across to the music and you can create some really nice effects with this. I'll just show you that bit again. So as it first comes in, it then flashes, and then it, and then it will um, like here, and then it just slowly wipes across and then fades out. So I'm going to show you how I sort of did this. So if we go into After Effects, so first of all, I start off with a the logo. So you can see here, it looks really nice. And all it basically is, I've put it on, I've just put it on the layer of the logo layer that I rendered out. And as it comes in, I'll just, actually what I'll do is I'll delete, I will delete the shine and I will show you how to do it. So I'm going to type in track code. So I'm just going to type in shine. Now this is a uh, third party plugin, so you will need to get it, but just type it in. I'm sure you can find it. So I'll drag it on. And at the moment, it just makes it look really quite horrible. I'm just going to put this above the glow quickly. So, so it looks really quite bad but that's just because if you look at the transfer mode it's normal but if we put it on add you'll be able to still see the remains of the logo here so you can still see it coming out and that's what you want it on add and you can simply colorize it you can go into here and just play around with some of these and so you want to you want to try look at the um, bright areas of your logo or anything that you're using. This is what I've always done. So if you look for the bright bright red, and you just want to try and match up that red. So I think this could come a bit a bit lighter. And then also, and then the mid tones always just a tad lighter of what you've actually done before so I'm gonna go a bit darker near the near at the red end of the spectrum and then you go there you go that looks really nice and to then make a flash so I'm going to just click LL oh, just moved it click LL for the waveform and I can see that the drop is there so what I normally do is I go I make a I go back to two frames so I can you can do that by pressing page up twice before the drop and then I'm just going to keyframe the ray length of 4 and the boost light now this is where it really and I'm just going to keep this at 0 actually because I want this shine to be on all the time so I'm going to keep the ray length at 4 but you can always just take it off by putting it down to 0 but I like it having there because it just gives a bit extra to the logo now I'm going to go to where the drop is and now as you can see I've already actually got a flash or a pulse here so yeah. So it, it goes it, to emphasize it a bit more. But what I can then do, this is where it really starts to look nice, is when you increase the boost light. So as you can see that when it renders out, as you can see that looks really nice. And I mean, you can go up massive and look, look at all of that. And uh, you can use this in so many different ways, but I'm just gonna keep it on a 70. And then I'll just go forward about, uh, 50, I'm just going to make it go forward about 10 frames. I did that by clicking shift and page down, and I just put that back down to zero. And you have a really nice flash there. Um, also, how I used it was also again at the start. So when it, as this as this render comes in, I've had a flash, and it was pretty much the same. But I think I also keyframe the opacity, the shine opacity. Because I didn't want it on all the time. I could have done it by the ray length. But I also did the opacity to give it a nice sort of fade in. So as you can see it sort of grows. It doesn't just come out. It, it sort of fades in. So that's another way you can use it. But I'm, that's exactly the same as what I did before. 
and I'm sure you can all work that out. And then if I go into my other main now, a lot of people did ask how to see, how to know how to do this, and how this light comes out, then it fades across and it actually fits the music really well. But I, what I, all I did was, because you can, if I was to, what I'll do is I'll just delete these keyframes. So you, if you, when you look, if you look at the source point, and you can move this little thing around, and that you can see, you can change it, and so you could have it. If you come in out below, it looks like it's rising up. You can change it, and I just moved this around. All I did was I just keyframed it over here to there, or it was the other way around, so it was here. And I just keyframed it to the other side, like this. So we could just go to the start, hit keyframe there, just line this up, go to the end, and then I'll just put it all the way over here, like that. Probably move that keyframe to there. And then, as you can see, it wipes across. And then I just keyframe the opacity in and out so it so it isn't there. Uh, comes in, wipes across, and it fades out. And that is basically it. So that was just a little quick tutorial on Trackboat Shine because it's actually quite an underused plugin. And I mean, you can you could even use it for flashes in, say, a COD Call of Duty thing. I think if I I'll quickly I'll quickly see if I can find. See, I open my 15k cinematics thing, and you'll be able to see I used it a couple of flashes, and it it really brings out the bright areas, which can look nice. But I've got to try and find it now. So give me a minute. Um, I uh, have no idea where I am. Okay, just have to hang on a second. Ah, oh, here we go, here we go. So I have this shine on adjustment layer, and you get this really nice flash going on. And I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just improvising now. So yeah, I've just, imp I've just put the opacity up on this one, and I did a slight tint, but I've just taken it down so it isn't as bright as it would be. Because it just gives it, it just gives it a bit more contrast, and all that is is the same. It's just two frames back, and then I've also gone into the graph editor. Now, not a lot of people know how to use this, but if you click on your shine opacity, I can click on this graph editor here, and what I can then do is, if I zoom in a bit, you can see it bends up. This isn't a very good example, but I might make a further tutorial on this. But this is essentially what easy easing does. Normally, if it wasn't easy ease or anything like that, it would just come down in a straight line. But what's happening now is it's gradually it it starts off slowly um, fading out, and then it gets more dramatic as it gets steeper. So it, it fades out quicker. So it's slow and then quick, and that can that can be used as a lot of different things. I could always make a tutorial on how to use this graph editor and the different sort of keyframes. Um, um, just leave a comment if you'd like that or something like that and yeah that's about it guys so um, this was just a quick tutorial hope you enjoyed uh, keep on leaving your, um, your suggestions and I'll be happy to make another one so yeah thanks for watching uh, see you later bye